Hey y'all, welcome back. Um, today I'm going to, well, the other day you saw me do a traditional Southern New Year's Day um, dinner with my collard greens, my black-eyed peas, uh, rice, and the pork. So today I'm going to do another traditional one, which is pork and sauerkraut. And I'm just using a link sausage. Now you could do this in a skillet or you could do it in like I'm going to do an elect an electric skillet, but usually I do a cast iron skillet. Today I'm just being lazy. I'm just going to use this. It's easy to clean up. So I'm just going to use a link sausage and it is already pre-cooked. So we're just basically getting some brown on it. And you can cut, cut these in just bite-sized pieces, however you like your sausage. And then put them in here, get a little olive oil. We're just gonna brown these up a little bit. Because there's a lot of flavor in that. Now you can also do this, I've done this before in the Instant Pot. Um, I've also done it in the slow cooker, put it in there, cook it for about four hours on low or on high, six hours on low, and that comes out real good so you don't have to mess with it. You can just put it in there, close it up, and it's ready when you're ready. Let me get these cut up. Now, I don't know if all of you do this. I put apples in mine and a little bit of apple juice for just a little extra flavor, and it brings down the tartness. I never did like sauerkraut growing up because my mom would make her own, and she used, let me get a lid to cover this up, cut down on some of that noise. She would cut, do a crock probably about this tall, about this big around, fill it with cabbage and uh, salt, and then she would cut a piece of plywood, put it on top, and then seal it with wax. That would sit on our back porch all summer long. It wasn't in the direct sun, but it was in the shade. And for some reason, I just, I always thought that was just rotting food. So I wasn't a real fan of sauerkraut until I got a little older. And I still, it's a little tart. I like to make my own. So I know I got those probiotics and prebiotics in there. That's good for your gut health. So that's what I'm gonna use today is one of mine. And this also has one onion, one large onion. I didn't have a large, so I got two um, small ones here. And I'm just gonna cut these in half moons. Don't want them too small because they're gonna cook for like 40 minutes and I don't want them to turn to mush. Get those all in there. Check my sausages. What can I twine them with? The small one. I have way too much stuff. This is going to be a problem because, as most of you know, I'm looking to move to Tennessee. We're going to homestead, build our own cabin out in the woods, and until it's done, right now we're going to be living in our camper. And I'm going to have a small little kitchen. Now this may look burnt to you, but I love that caramelization of the sugar in there. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. That's just going to add a lot of flavor. But yeah, we're going to probably be in Middle Tennessee somewhere. And living in a camper while we build our cabin. We're going to bring you guys along on the process, show you everything I'm doing. May have to change my cooking up a little bit in a camper, but it will be fun. So let me get a plate, put these on when I take the sausage out. Put that there, got my onions cut, and it might be just brown enough yet. I'm going to leave it at that. That's brown enough for me. Let me get something to take those out. I hate using metal on here, but I'll be gentle. But like I said, this has got, I'm putting apples in it. I'm also putting potatoes in it. My mom likes to make it with just sauerkraut 
and sausage and then she'll use um, make mashed potatoes to go along with it. I'm just combining it all and doing it all in one place. So I got one dish. All right, there's that. Now I'm gonna put the onions in and we'll let them saute down a little bit, get a little brown. And we'll get our apple cut up. I got two apples. We're just gonna slice these in about that big of pieces. But yeah, this is this is more of a northern, I guess, traditional New Year's Day. And since I was born in Ohio, I had both. I had the sauerkraut, and then I had my mom's family side, the southern side, and had the black-eyed peas, the cornbread, collard greens, and pork. Usually hog jaw. So let me get this cut up. my apples get these all stirred down we're going to use one cup of apple juice i use 100 percent apple juice with no sugar added so we're going to measure out one cup I'm gonna go ahead and saute off these onions, get them browned a little bit, and then we'll be back. Okay, so the onions seem to have browned up a little bit. I don't want them all the way caramelized. So now I'm just gonna add in our apples. Let them start softening just a little bit. Maybe just two or three minutes. And while those do their doing, while those do their cooking, cut up these potatoes. I'm just using a white russet because I don't have any waxy potatoes. Usually I'd use a waxy red potato, but they don't have any. And don't feel like going to the grocery store because I went yesterday. It was packed. And not the mood to be around all them people right now. So let's get this cut up. I'm just doing these in like probably just over an inch cubes. One more. I got three, depends on how much potato you want in yours. You don't have to put it in at all. Like I said, you can do mashed potatoes and just serve this with the mashed potatoes. I just like putting it in here, get it all in one big pot. I'm big on one pot meals. It's a lot less to clean up. If I do make my mashed potatoes, I make them in the Instant Pot. I started using my Instant Pot for mashed potatoes and I will not go back to boiling them. 20 minutes, they're delicious. Amazing, let me take, I'm just doing some quality assurance. Good. Hope you guys had a good New Year's Eve. I spent mine right here on the couch, watching the new uh, New Year's Eve special from Nashville. Hope you guys don't know it, I love country music. Basically all I listen to except maybe 50s and 60s music and Elvis of course. So that's going to be my new, and hopefully they do it every year, my new go-to on New Year's instead of the New York. Plus you got to celebrate twice, because they're in Central Time. And that's where I'm probably going to be in the Central Time. So they celebrated at midnight for New York, and then they did another hour and celebrated again for the Nashville area. Okay, so I've got the potatoes cooking and the um, apples together here. Now I'm going to add in, I'm going to lower the heat just a little bit to about a medium and put in my sauerkraut. Woo. 
<coughs> sauerkraut basil. I don't want to waste any of that, so I'm going to put this apple juice in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it in here. Get all that sauerkraut out. I'm not wasting any. Get that moved around a little bit. I am going to put probably about a tablespoon, maybe a little more of butter. Give it a little richness. Now, some people will put caraway seeds in here. There are caraway seeds in if you buy store bought um, sauerkraut. Or if you make your own and use caraway seeds, you have that in there. I don't put any extra in this one, in this recipe. Just just what you see is what you're going to get. I'm going to put a little salt and pepper. Not much. There we go. Now we're going to put the potatoes in here. And once all this is in here, we're going to let it cook covered for about 20 minutes. And then I'm going to uncover it and cook it for an additional 20 minutes. That's a big chunk of potato. Get that one cut down. We're just going to let all these flavors meld together for about 20 minutes. Now I am going to go ahead and this is totally optional. I put a quarter cup of brown sugar in mine. Just sprinkle it around the top. Gives a little sweetness to that tartness because I used the tart apple. We got the Darkness from the sauerkraut evens it out a little bit for me. Okay, I'm gonna cover this, let it cook for 20 minutes, and then I'm gonna put the sausages in with it and cook it for an additional 20 minutes uncovered so it absorbs all of that uh, apple juice and the um, brine from the sauerkraut. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set my 20 minute timer and I will be back to see you when we get it uncovered. Okay, my timer just went off. It's been 20 minutes and this has been simmering. I had it on a low, medium low, just letting it simmer to soften up these potatoes. Let me check the potatoes and see how tender they really are. Cause we're gonna do it another 20 minutes. That's apple. So cut into one of these. Mm, they're about done. Mm. And taste that sauerkraut and the apple juice in the potatoes. So now I'm just gonna put this back in, the sausages, get all those oils, because there's flavor in that. Just nestle all that down in there so we can get some of the flavor of them, sauerkraut on them. And we're just gonna let this sit, sit here and simmer, possibly 20 minutes. I'm gonna keep checking it just to make sure because I don't want these potatoes falling apart. But I'm gonna keep it on, well, in my opinion, mine is about 300. And I'm just gonna let these simmer for another 20 minutes and I'll be back. Okay, so it's been about 18 minutes. I'm gonna turn this off. Most of my fluid, the, apple juice, the brine, everything's been absorbed. So I'm just going to give this a little taste. Find a spot that's not steaming. I'll get a little bit of this sauerkraut. I want a small sausage. Okay. Mmm. That's good. And taste the brown sugar in it. I can taste the apple, apple juice and the onion, it's very good. So I think it's just, I like putting the apple juice and the brown sugar in there, kind of brings down the tartness of the sauerkraut. You don't have to, 
You can leave that out. You can even leave the apples out if you want. I just like to make one big dish so it's easy to serve. I got one pan to clean up and that's all there is. But if you guys haven't uh, subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button. Um, as I told you in my last video, I think the last New Year's video for uh, Black Eyed Peas, um, I did cross over 4,000. I cannot thank you guys enough. It's all because of my subscribers. I call you family, um, the Greg's Kitchen family. You guys make me feel truly blessed. When I was at mom's, she couldn't quit talking about all the beautiful and wonderful comments you guys are leaving for her. It means the world to her. I tried to teach her how to do comments and respond to comments on her iPad. She's learning. She's a little, she's still a little bit uh, <laughs> confused on doing that, but we're working on it. So you might see one of Mama Vera's comments pop up to you guys. Um, she loves you all. She is having a ball doing this and she's actually, I think today, doing two or three more recipes. I told her to rest for a while after Christmas and she did. So she's back at it. So you'll be seeing some of her recipes coming up in the next week or so. And give this a try. It's delicious. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and share this video with your friends or on Facebook. That's what's getting us out to more people. And YouTube is now sharing our videos, which really makes me feel good. And it's all because of you guys. It's not because of my videos, my recipes. It's because you guys are watching and you guys are sharing and you guys are commenting. And I love you guys for doing that. Thank you for joining my kitchen and got a whole bunch more recipes for you in 2022. Love y'all. Bye-bye.